For the past two weeks, you've been reading about a bad brag. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. That I might have been given a bad break, but I've got an awful lot to live for. Thank you. The words Lou Gehrig spoke that day left an indelible image on the psyche of our country. He had been diagnosed with a terminal disease, a myotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS. And although most Americans today have heard of Lou Gehrig's disease, most people don't know that much about it. ALS is a motor neuron disease, and actually in the rest of the world, outside of the United States, it's called motor neuron disease, and ALS just happens to be one of the largest of the motor neuron diseases. So it's a disease that affects the cells in the brain that the motor neuron cells that control movement. And they die. We don't know why they die. But something happens, whether it's just one process or many different processes, we don't know. And when those cells die, they can no longer transmit the signal from the brain down these filaments called axons to the muscles. So there's no signal going to the muscle telling it what the brain is telling it to do. The signal's broken. And eventually what happens is, the even though uh, you would think, you know, the, your arm, move your arm, move your foot, you have to think about it, really, it also affects the muscles of the diaphragm. And so what eventually happens is the diaphragm, you can no longer take a breath, breath in or expel a breath and most of our pals die from the inability to breathe actively on their own. At the present time, there is no cure for ALS, but there are ways we can manage the disease and increase life expectancies. It's critical that support is found in two crucial areas, research and community services. There is research that goes on in ALS. Uh, and so for instance, when it comes to drugs, most pharmaceuticals, aren't interested. We have a population of about 30,000 people in the United States. I mentioned the 800 in Michigan. There's about 30,000 people in the United States. It's a very small population and it can cost hundreds of millions if not billions of dollars to bring a drug to the market which we hear about all the time. So when you've only got 30,000 people who are going to utilize or less than 30,000 utilizing that drug there isn't a big payback in terms of recouping research and development. So that's where the national organizations come in because they're the ones that can help to fund that research. We also have the National Institutes of Health and the Department of Defense that also regularly fund ALS research. So it's really important that we have these research partners out in the ALS community. ALS of Michigan made a decision many years ago that our focus would be 100% on our pals and their families. So everything that we do, all of our programs and services are directed towards helping them live every day with this disease. As I said, from respite care to speech services, 85% of our pals will lose their ability to speak. We do augmentative communication services. We help them get speech equipment, our equipment loan closets, support groups, workshops giving out equipment, all of those kinds of things are what make life better for our pals. And, and those are the kinds of services that really do make a difference in a community. And I, I think of it as that's what a community is for, to help people have the best possible life, even when they're going through something as difficult as ALS. And that people should know that's what their donations support. We're a small organization. We're not a multi-million dollar organization by any stretch of the imagination. And I certainly don't mean to make it sound like research isn't important. It's not either research or community services. It's all working together. But that is our focus, is the community, the resources, our pals and their families. So any contribution of any amount makes a difference. It, you know, I, I, people often ask, well, you know, what does a certain amount of money buy? Well, you know what, $15 buys an hour of respite care. Um, you know, $50 buys a bedside table. So it, it's not about huge dollars. We do a lot with a little. ALS of Michigan indeed does a lot with a little, thanks to the creativeness and perseverance of people like Burstein. 
but with the rising costs related to the care and treatment of patients, other members of the community are stepping up to fill the void. Jerry Acker of the law firm Goodman Acker in Southfield, Michigan is one of those people. Well, for the last 30 years, we've been practicing personal injury work. We represent families and individuals who've been injured as a result of someone else's negligence. Um, catastrophic injuries, uh, injuries that impact people's whole lives, um, injuries to children, there's a whole gamut of what we do. But my uncle Irving passed away 30 years from, ago from ALS, and it was a painful, slow, uh, impossible death that no one should have to go through. And it's come back um, in our office because of Brad's mom, um, who's, who's fighting this darn thing. Brad Perry is an associate attorney at Goodman Acker. He recently had a family member diagnosed with ALS. Fortunately, he found help at the ALS of Michigan. Well, the ALS of Michigan is great. Um, they actually support people here in Michigan that suffer from, those, from that disease, and uh, they, they donate items so that people here in Michigan can get around with ALS. I mean, it's a, it's a horrible disease. It affects you know, every limb. It affects each person differently. So what they do is they help those individuals cope with the, with the disease. In the summer of 2013, the national organization, ALS Association, raised just over $2.3 million to help fund community services and research for fighting ALS. While that certainly seems like a formidable amount, it's far short of what is actually needed. This last summer, lightning struck in the form of the Ice Bucket Challenge. The Ice Bucket Challenge helped the ALS Association raise over $100 million, a 3,500% increase over 2013. There was a young man by the name of Peter Freitz out in Boston. He's a young man uh, in his late 20s who has ALS. And he and a friend came up with the idea. Um, from what I've read, it was actually a takeoff of what some golfers had done at one time. They had decided to dump ice on their heads after a round of golf, professional golfers, and then thought, oh, well, let's do this for charity. Well, they kind of capitalized on the idea and said, let's do this for ALS. And just from that idea, we have what is now a worldwide phenomenon. It's, are you kidding me? Is there not a better way? But, you know, I, part of what I do in the political world is fundraising, and I know how hard it is to fundraise. And as it turns out, it was just a great idea that just captured everybody's imagination um, in ways that you never do. I thought it was, it was great. And actually, the first time that I heard of it was, uh, was on Facebook, of course. And it involved um, a couple that we met out in Costa Rica for our honeymoon back in October. And they were from, they went to Boston College and it was to support, I believe uh, the gentleman's name is Pete Fratz and it was to support him. So you know, we reached out and they kind of told us this is big thing that's going on and next thing you know, everybody was doing it. And, um, and, it, and it was great, it really, uh, you know, I got involved. I, I actually nominated four people, you know, three of my friends and my brother, and then it kind of stemmed from there. So it was, uh, it's, it's a great thing. It brought a ton of awareness and it raised a ton of money, which is what this disease needs. The challenge? Either pour a bucket full of ice and water over your head or donate a small amount of money to an ALS organization. And it spread like wildfire with countless celebrities, politicians, and everyday folk taking their turn under the frigid water. Before this summer, most people weren't talking about ALS. All it took to change everything was a challenge. You wanna do this ice bucket challenge? I accept the challenge. Challenge accepted. No one could have predicted this amount of attention for ALS. But we're incredibly grateful to everyone who was willing to stand up to a disease that steals your ability to walk, talk, and even breathe before it takes your life. I'm happy to donate to this very worthy cause. We can create awareness and change. Let's do this. Every video, every share, and every donation contributed to the greatest outpouring of support our cause has ever seen. On behalf of people living with ALS and their families, thank you. For Goodman Acker, it was not only a chance to help a good cause, but for friends and associates to bond together. 
Oh, it made me feel great. I mean, it just shows that they're all, you know, it's a big support system here. I'm here more than I'm at home, and to know that they actually care and are actually, you know, dumping water on themselves for disease, and, and many of them also donated to, you know, the cause as well. So it wasn't just simply, you know, dumping water on them. So it's a very, very, uh, very good thing to, to come here and work. You know what? I'm lucky enough to work at a place that I enjoy, and I like to come to work with people who are fun and enjoyable and work hard and I spend probably more time with these people than I do at home uh, and uh, no one wants to go to work with folks they don't like or folks that are causing trouble and we have a great group of people here and it's really been a joy over the 30 years I've been coming here um, to work with these folks. With the ice bucket challenge gone, another challenge has arisen. What to do with this newfound support and how does an organization keep it going? You know, hope for, if not a cure, hope for a treatment. And that really is the end game in any disease, is to find a treatment that we turn this into a chronic disease, something that we can treat. You may have to live with, some, but we can treat it, and you can have a normal lifespan. Or the best outcome, of course, is always a cure. Um, that is what we hope for. But the truth of the matter is, and as hard as it is to sometimes realize, that may not happen for many years to come. And so it's critical that we have agencies like ALS of Michigan that work with and help the families and the PALS live with this disease because there are so many needs in the ALS community. So many needs in the ALS community and beyond. It makes us appreciate when people give of themselves to make someone else's life better. I kind of kid with folks about um, the money that we put into our schools. You know, we always say that our kids are the most important things in our lives, and yet we don't spend enough money to educate them, to make sure that, to invest in them, to make sure that they have the kind of lives. So what we can do here is we can do everything we can because we're all in this together. Um, my kid is, is here. Uh, other folks have kids. Uh, when you see someone who's homeless, a, a girl or a boy who's homeless on the streets, that could be my daughter, that could be my son. Um, you just can't walk by folks and just ignore them. We're all part of the same program.